Hello out there, welcome to season five of your next mission video podcast. I'm so glad you joined us today because we're gonna be talking about leadership, storytelling, and how one individual is making the difference in the lives of our veterans and their families across the country. So stick around, you won't wanna miss this one. We'll be right back. Welcome to your next mission video podcast where we tell the stories of those who have served in the past and those who are serving today. From transition to financial wellness, VA benefits to mental health, we cover issues facing veterans, active military, and their families. Now here's your host, the 12th Sergeant Major of the Army and co-founder of the American Freedom Foundation, Jack L. Tilly. Thanks for joining us today, and thanks to all the veterans and service members and families for your service to our great country. Now, before we get started, I personally want to thank our presenting sponsors, Navy Federal Credit Union, whose members are the mission, and Purdue Global, where you can start your comeback with an additional sponsorship with Blue Cross Blue Shield FEP Dental and Blue Cross Blue Shield FEP Vision and USAA together they make your next mission happen. They love our veterans and families, and I say it every week, we love them too. Our show today is about leadership and storytelling and how we can work together to take care of our veterans and in, in the community. And I'm so extremely excited to bring back for his second visit, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Dr. Scott Mann, Green Beret, keynote speaker, New York Times bestselling author of Operational Express, leadership coach and founder of Rooftop Leadership and Hero's Journey, and author of soon to be released leadership book entitled, Nobody Is Coming to Save You, A Green Beret's Guide to Getting the Big Stuff Done. My goodness, sir, you've got a lot of stuff you got going on there. <laughs> no, I appreciate it, Sergeant Major. Thanks for having me on. I must say though, I'm not a doctor, although I might play one on TV. <laughs> Well, you, you sound like a doctor, but we'll just leave you in as a doctor right now. You know, sir, we, right. have, a, we have a lot to talk about this morning. But uh, before we start that, would you, would you mind just telling the audience just a little bit about yourself? Yeah, thanks. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm married to almost 29 years to a beautiful Imani man. I have three boys that are all grown now. Uh, one of them is uh, an infantry officer. The other is uh, federal law enforcement. And my youngest son is, is still playing baseball in college. Um, I spent about 23 years in the United States Army and almost 18 of that as an Army Green Beret, working by, with, and through indigenous uh, cultures all over the world, a lot of time in Afghanistan post 9-11. And then I've been retired for about 10 years now, and I spend a lot of my time teaching what I learned as a Green Beret on how to take those old school interpersonal skills and help uh, people lead in corporate America, um, in small businesses to make better human connections. And then I also do a lot of advocacy for veterans and military communities and first responders, particularly around the power of storytelling. Well, I appreciate all you do. But I, I usually tell somebody if they say I've got 23 or 24 years, you know, I had 36. I always call them a quitter because they didn't stay long. Enough, so. Compared to you, that's <laughs> absolutely true. Yeah, absolutely true. Well, you're uh, not a quitter. You're doing so much. You're doing a lot. And, and I, you know, as an old soldier, I appreciate you, all you're doing with that veteran community. Because I, just real quick before we start here, I, I you know, I've went to one of your shows. I want to talk about it a little bit later, but uh, I see what you're doing, and I see the difference that you're making in the lives of, uh, you know, our veterans and families. And you know, a lot of people suffer. A lot of people go through a lot of different stuff. And and the shows that you do for the people that are listening. Uh, really is about healing and about storytelling. So I'm just sure. glad to have you on your show. You know, through the Heroes of Journey, you, your use of storytelling as it means for, you know, it means for uh, warriors to really, quite frankly, to find their voice and begin a journey of healing and exploring the feelings that, uh, you know, that they might never share. I got to tell you, I, I usually don't share my stories with a lot of people. I, I share some stories, and but the ones that I guess really hurt, I don't say too much about sometimes. Why is that so important to you? Well, there's a couple of angles to that. First of all, um, the, you know, I believe, first of all, at a high level that our, our military community 
is a national treasure. Mm -hmm. I really believe that. Yeah, we absolutely. live in this, in my new book that I've got coming out, I talk about the, the enemy that we face nowadays is not the Republican or the Democrat or the, the relative that voted for this presidential candidate and you, you're sitting across from the Thanksgiving dinner. The, the enemy these days is the division in the country itself. It is the social division that I call the churn. And it's this, this gap between humans and it's causing us to really walk away from the things that we know and love as a country. And where I'm going with that is I believe the military community, not just our veterans, our active duty, our guard component, our reserve component, and our families, they are the moral compass of this nation. They still fundamentally understand uh, what, what it means to be connected, what it means to, 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 to look beyond race, color, and creed, and focus on just our values. And we need them leading us here at home. So a big reason for my advocacy with the veteran population, yes, it is to help them tell their story and move through their post-traumatic stress. But ultimately, it is a societal goal because we need those veterans, those family members leading us in these challenging times, not just in politics, but in small businesses and nonprofits at a community level in families. They've run so many miles and we need them leading us here at home. So the things that are jamming them up like post-traumatic stress, survivor's guilt, moral injury, whatever it is that's keeping them from being fully available and in the game, I believe that we can bust through that. And mainly the way to do that is through narrative and storytelling. I think the other thing, when you look at the military, it's a melting pot. And you got all yep. these different cultures come to one and, and you learn so much about, about different cultures, I guess. You learn so much about other people and you really learn how to communicate and how to listen and and really what's, what's hard sometimes, it's, it's the, how to tell people about how you live and what you've seen and, and get them to understand, because right. I don't think right. sometimes they do understand. And it's, it's yeah, go ahead. No, I, that's fair. I, I think that's very fair. And, and, you know, first of all, I think it's important to remember that civil societies have bring, been using storytelling for tens of thousands of years to, to reassimilate warriors back into their society. Uh, Sebastian Younger writes about it uh, in Tribe, but but in my studies of storytelling over the last decade, I, you won't find a, a civil society on the planet that doesn't use storytelling to bring their warriors back home. But you know, the country that's probably the worst at it is America. Yeah. We do not do a good job. And a lot of it is because we put so much emphasis on the individual here we, we beat into, drum into our, our war fighters that you're the quiet professional. And, and, and that's fine. I, I, I believe that's true. But there's a difference between being quiet and being silent. And I, I believe that we have an inherent responsibility as war fighters when we come home to repurpose those struggles into the service of our civil society for our families, for our communities. And it's hard. It's, it's not easy to, to talk about some of that stuff. And I'm not as much talking about the therapy of it as I am what is the lived experience and lessons in what each of our warfighters has been through offers so much to our civil society right now that we need to hear. And so the war, I call it the generosity of scars, Sergeant Major, repurposing our struggles in the service of others uh, yeah. through narrative yeah. is probably one of the most generous um, impactful things that we can do as veterans coming home. Yeah. I, I tell you the other thing, we're, we're both taught to sort of keep everything to ourselves, you sure. know, in the military. I mean, I'm not going to, if I got a chink in my arm or it, it, somehow I think it's going to hurt me on my uh, promotion to the next grade or something like that. So you're, you're sort of taught to say, you know, I got some things that are bothering me, but I'm not going to say too much about it. But uh, I mean, that's just the way you're, and you try to get out of that when you get out of the military and you start talking a little bit, but it's, uh, it's a struggle. Did, did you view the power of storytelling for veterans uh, led you to write and perform you know, the last out, the L.J. by Greenberg? I guess that, that's really, really give you the motivation to do that, correct? It was all a, a singular journey that where my transition from the military was very dark. I had a lot of survivor's guilt. I had a lot of um, just I'd walked away from my purpose and identity in a way that I wasn't prepared for. And, and so it caused me to go through things in transition. On the outside, I was very successful. I was a business owner. I was writing. I was, you know, still had my marriage. But on the inside, I was dealing with things that I'd never dealt with. And they were preventing me from, in my opinion, living a life that was fully expressed and fulfilled to a level that I wanted to live it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and, and so what I found was that a couple of mentors came alongside me and both civilians, and they showed me how to use storytelling as a way to heal myself, as a way to realign with my purpose and identity. And here's the reason, and this is the, this is really important, Sergeant Major, is that what we've learned in the last five years with neuroscience and being able to see the brain is that there's been a lot of research done on storytelling and the brain and how it lights up. And what we know is that the brain is a metaphorical pattern matching organ. The brain has a mandate to make sense of the world and a lot of combat doesn't make sense. A lot of what we see as warriors doesn't make sense, but we're trying to make sense of it and we're stuck in this loop. And the brain uses storytelling as a sense-making tool. Yeah. And if we can introduce storytelling in a way that is structured and process oriented, it, it, it can actually realign the left and right hemispheres of the brain. It can address uh, trauma and it can, uh, it can bridge. It can bridge that civil military and gap in ways that no other form of communication can do. I tell you the other thing though is, is that uh, I, for me personally, I think as you get older, you think more about you know, what you've been through in life. And, and the things and maybe the things you've seen and things you wish you maybe hadn't done. And, and I think it just bothers you just a little bit more. And I think that's, I think, I, again, I think as you get older, it's just, it's more of a struggle sometimes, especially if you don't have somebody around you that you say, hey, look, you know, this is what I've done. This, you know, so they can sort of give you some, bounce some ideas off. And it really, I, I, again, as I get older, it's just tougher and tougher to deal with. Uh, it is. And, yeah. And, and, yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't go away. I mean, no, those, it'll those never go away. Yeah, those narratives stay within us. However, um, what what I learned through a lot of coaching and a lot of work was that you can actually metabolize a lot of that guilt, a lot of those feelings through the power of story by putting it out into the world. And so you, you through narrative exchange, you start to make peace with a lot of those memories. You asked about the play. The play was simply an extension of of my, of my journey and my deep work on storytelling. I had a mentor written what he was a football player, pro football player. And he had written a, a play about becoming a, a, an NFL player after growing up as a runt on a ranch. Yeah. And that, <laughs> that, that play went off Broadway. It did very well. And eventually he talked me into writing a play of yeah. last trilogy of a green beret. And it started honestly as a one person show. It started as something that i never thought would see the light of day. It was to heal myself. But then I performed it at a little community theater and people really connected with it. And the next thing, you know, um, we're taking this thing around the country and, and Gary Sinise uh, was sponsoring it. So the, 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 the point here is this story. You never know where storytelling is going to take you. You may think that you're sitting on this traumatic memory that has you jammed up and it has you full of guilt or whatever. That probably is the very story that somebody needs to hear in their darkest moment. And that's what I found last out with our play. I mean, you saw it, you saw the talkbacks. Um, there are so many points in that story and they're all based on true events where people connect with that and they locate themselves in the story. And this is the last thing I'll say on this because this is really important for us as war fighters to think about and family members. When you are willing to be generous with your scars and put your stories into narratives in the service of others, the way the human brain is works is I listen. Like if you were to tell me a story about some of your things you went through in Vietnam and what you learned, I would listen autobiographically to that story. And that's just what I do. So I'm listening and I'm processing my own lived experience in the safety of your narrative. So as you talk about your struggle in the jungles of Vietnam, I'm locating myself and I'm prob probably processing my experiences in Afghanistan. And that's, of an oversimplification, but it's not far off. We locate ourselves in the stories of others when they are generous with their struggles and they put them out there in the service of people uh, in ways that we can do with no other form of communication. And then we start to make sense of the things that didn't make sense before. Yeah. I, I, one last time, we got to take a quick break in a second, but, but some of the things that I think if you don't tell your story, you just sort of explode. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, just you builds up and builds up and then something cracks, something goes wrong or you, or you lose your, lose your temper or whatever the heck it is. But, uh, you got to get out for the people who listen. You got to get out and tell your story. I think every veteran has a story. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But every veteran has a story, so it's important for us. Yeah, sir. I want to talk. Uh, take. I want you to take us through the you know hero's journey workshop and and what you're finding. Uh, but first, you know, of course, we always got to take a quick break. So hold that thought. We'll be right back. 
This is your next mission video podcast with me, your host, Jack L. Tilly, 12th Sergeant Major of the Army. If you're enjoying this discussion, please like us, click on that subscribe button below, and be sure to click on the bell to receive notifications of all of our upcoming video podcasts. I'll be right back after a word from our presenting sponsors. You're watching Your Next Mission video podcast, proudly presented by Navy Federal Credit Union, the most trusted credit union owned by members of the military community, serving all branches of the armed forces and their families. Their members are the mission. Learn more at NavyFederal.org. And Purdue Global. You're ready for a comeback, and with Purdue Global, you can do more than take classes. You can take charge of your story, of your career, of your life. Earn a degree you can be proud of and get an education employer's respect. Start your comeback at purdueglobal.edu. Now back to your host, the 12th Sergeant Major of the Army, Jack L. Tilly. Welcome back. We're talking with Lieutenant Colonel Retired Scott Mann, Green Beret, keynote speaker, leadership coach and founder of the Rooftop Leadership and the Hero's Journey. Before we jump back into our discussion, I'd like to take a, a few seconds to tell you about a, a new program we're excited about called Your Next Mission at VCS, a Veterans Community Support Program. We'll provide personalized one-on-one -on -one support to address the unique needs within our veteran community through our many partnerships with other veteran service organizations. Please check us out at yournextmission.org forward slash VCS and register, register to participate today. Remember, we want to help you with whatever issues you and your family are facing. So please reach out to us. Sir, can you share some stories that, uh, that show the impact of storytelling workshops or having with uh, our veteran community? Absolutely. Um, I'll, I'll just bring you a couple. Um, we've done, we've done our storytelling workshops with gold star family members. We've done them with the children of, uh, fallen war fighters. Um, we've done them with veterans from Vietnam, Korea, post nine 11. And what always strikes me, Sergeant major is, is the kind of the universal singular, uh, power of struggle. Struggle is the common thread uh, in the military community because, by definition, warfighters go through struggle, and it's what we face. Um, but, but I'll just give you um, I'll just give you a couple of examples on this. But uh, one of them was um, we it started with the play. Okay, we did the play in San Diego, and um, we my character Danny Patton is 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 having a, a bit of tension with his son as the Afghanistan war drags out his son join he doesn't want him to join and they end up having a big blow up and eventually reconcile at the end um but out in the audience was a career green beret master sergeant now uh, his name was Leo and he was sitting next to his son uh who who was a 20 year old young man at this point in college and they were pretty estranged. There was a lot of challenge between these two young men, uh, between these two men, and not a lot was uh, not a lot was spoken much uh, anymore. But they agreed to come to the play together, and then after the play was over, very emotional ending. Um, the two of them walked out after the talk back in the parking lot and embraced each other. Each of them told me separately for close to fifteen minutes without a word spoken. They just held each other and cried, um, and then. Each of them came to the storytelling workshop separately yeah. and was able to share the stories of what it was like to grow up as a kid in a Green Beret family, wondering if your dad was going to come home and seeing the mood swings in your dad. But then the, the dad was able to tell the stories of what it was like in his world. And what you got was this amazing shared perspective. And each of them, because they had been opened up and listened autobiographically, you know, to the story of Danny Patton and his son, Caden, they located themselves in that story. And then they had opened up enough that they were willing to work through their own personal narrative and start and the body starts to make sense of it. The body starts to make sense of it. And you start to get this this perspective that you didn't have before. And, and, and that's where this is so powerful. I've seen the exact same thing with gold star families, children of the fallen, 
um, on and on and on where if you're willing to work through your story and be generous with your scars, guaranteed somebody sitting in that circle locates themselves in that story and it was exactly what they needed to hear at exactly that moment. You know, it's it, you know we do these. I, Ted told me the other day. I think we did over 170 uh, podcasts, video podcasts, and it never ceases to amaze me that I hear something. I think to myself, why don't we implement that? Implement that into the uh, into the training for our veterans, our service members right now. Why don't we start talking about how important storytelling is at a young age? So when they go through the military and they get out of the service. Uh, there's a, they think a little bit clearer about what they're going to do, and maybe they got some better ideas. Uh, you know, that's that's important for all of us. And I think, uh, I think sometimes when we get out, we have to find, you know, where you fit in. It takes you a while to do that anyway. So that's that's good information. That's great information. So I appreciate. Well, and, and I'm glad you bring that up because I think it's a real problem. It's one of the things that we're trying to do at the Hero's Journey is we're really trying to make people aware. Of yeah. just how important storytelling is to what we do in the world. It is so critical. It's part of how we operate. It's part of how we navigate the world. And if we exclude storytelling from that, we're really setting ourselves up for failure. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. You know, you told us on the prep call that uh, in your travels, you've had, you, you know, you've learned three myths about storytelling. With the, Would you share those with the audience? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would tell you that, that everywhere I go, I travel around the country and I, I, I train storytellers uh, in the civilian world. I train them in the corporate world. So this isn't just reserved for veterans, right? Yeah, yeah. But there are several things that I hear all the time uh, about storytelling that I think are very, very important. Is One is I don't have a story. Yeah, everybody's got a story. <laughs> Everybody has a story. But the fact of the matter is the, the brain tells itself a story to make sense of new information. So not only right, you don't have a story. You have hundreds of thousands of stories, right? It's 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 about learning to recognize that those things are evolving in real time. And once you learn how to design and put those stories into the world, it's super powerful. Number two is um, nobody wants to hear my story, which is absolutely not true. There's there's a saying, Sergeant Major, that I really like in communications and storytelling that I try to teach leaders and transitioning veterans, which is this. What's personal is universal. If it's personal to you, it's going to be universally power, powerful to the people that are listening to you because we're social creatures. If you talk about um, what it meant to you growing up and the role that you're like my dad sitting right next to me, for example. Mm -hmm. And I tell a lot of stories about my dad and how he influenced me when I was training to be a Green Beret and how he would write me letters in ranger school every single day. He was the only dude that wrote <laughs> me a letter every single day I was in that crappy course. All right. And as soon as I say that, people immediately, they either connect with my dad or they connect with the letters. Yeah. So, so, so people, you, they do want to hear what you have to say and what's personal is universal. And then the final myth, and this one probably keeps more people from telling their stories than anything else, is my story's not as good as hers. And that one, I think, here's what we've got to do on that one. We've got to be really mindful that a lot of our veterans, a lot of our family members, a lot of civilians, when we're transitioning, if you have three tours in combat and you have a ton of experience and you have these amazing stories, we need to recognize that there are other people in that room that have equally powerful stories. We don't have the market cornered on trauma or hard times. There are, <laughs> That's true. You know, there are plenty of people who have endured that in pre-service trauma, in their childhood, or even just went through challenges of being a parent. You know, and we need to recognize that everybody has their own unique struggles in their life and beautiful stories around them. And and I need the storytellers watching this to understand that comparing your story to someone else's is is about as big a waste of time as you can do as a storyteller. It has nothing to do with their story. It only has to do with your story and how much you are connected to it. Uh, and if you allow that comparison to happen, you'll look like you don't trust yourself when you communicate, and then it becomes a problem. You know, I agree with everything that you said right there, but i got to make one comment about uh, something. Sometimes you tell your story, you start telling your story to somebody, and they, 
and they just sort of act like they don't want to listen or they turn the other way and they and they go somewhere else and and I just uh just bothers the heck out of me and I just well they just just not interested or something. I, I don't know if that's probably never happened to you, but it's happened to me a couple of times that I just get really bothered by that. Well, okay. So that, that's, you know, unfortunately when I was talking about the churn that my yeah. book talks about, you know, we live in the churn, there's four D's. Distraction, disengagement, disconnection, distrust. Distraction is a major problem today. The average attention span for a human is eight seconds. And according to Microsoft, that's about one second longer than a goldfish. So <laughs> when you're talking to someone and they check their phone or whatever, yeah. first of all, as a storyteller, storytellers are the best listeners. So yeah. we always want to practice active listening when we're listening. So that's a good point you brought up. But if you encounter somebody that does that, that seems disinterested or isn't listening, what I always, I just stop talking immediately and I just stare at them. Yeah, and that's, that's for a good one. I never thought about. <laughs> yeah, if, you're better on a keynote, if I'm doing a keynote and I see someone on their phone, I'll walk right over to them and I'll just stop talking and I'll wait for them to get off their phone. And that's to me, that's not being rude. That's just I'm, I want to make sure that you're able to hear what I say. And so, one thing that you can do, and you reserve the right to do in any conversation, is if you notice that someone's not listening to you, stop talking immediately. And wait for that person to, and they will. They'll look up, wait for them to reengage, and then resume. Yeah, you know, I gotta, I gotta say, you can really tell when you're talking. You talk, you go out and speak a lot, and I go out and speak a little bit, probably not as much as you're doing right now. But you can tell if you've connected with the audience because nobody's talking; they're all looking directly at you. And when I'm talking, I sort of focus on one person at a time and look them right in the eye and sort of engage them there. Oh yeah, and, and, and in fact, uh, yeah, I love doing that because I want them to feel the way that I feel. And if you were able to project that out to your audience, I think, you, you know, you're getting a point across. How can someone participate in one of these sessions? I mean, you do a lot of them, or, or I guess you're still doing a lot of them, how, but how can they participate? You can go to theheroesjourney.org and check us out there. We're, we're constantly putting new stories up there. Um, DM me on social media and we'll, we'll get you some dates. Um, we're in the process right now of kind of resetting our, our story workshops, and we're going to start hitting them hard at the end of the summer. So I would say pay close attention to scottman.com and theheroesjourney.org. Um, we'll be announcing more story workshops. We're also going to roll one out online that I'm really excited about uh, for, for veterans and first responders and family members and civilians, honestly, who are a little reluctant to storytell in a group and they want to start with just themselves. We're going to be rolling out a uh, online story course pretty soon as well. Well, I think anytime you get into social media and start talking about social media and putting that stuff online, you're getting a lot of a lot more people to uh, to listen to you and participate with the things that you're doing anyway. You do, and and you know the thing is the thing to remember too is no matter what the medium is that you're on. See, part of the problem, Sergeant Major, is we have we have going back to what you said about we have this reluctance to storytell. You know. Mm -hmm. Because of the civil society that we live in, we're so modern, we're so transactional, we've surrendered most of our attention span to mass technology and these, you know, these dopamine dispensers that we carry around. <laughs> um, That's for sure. I'm, it, I'm hooked too, I guess. Yeah, and it's really taken away our ability to connect to the natural world and the humans across from us. So what yeah. I tell people is if you want to be, if you want to own every room you walk into, seriously, if you, so if you're applying for a loan, if you're, you know, if you're negotiating, if you're communicating to the boss, if you want to own every room you walk into, by being relatable to people's pain and relevant to their goals, you've got to train as a storyteller. You've got to train the same way you trained as an infantryman, as an artilleryman, um, in any special skill. Um, you've got to train in storytelling. It is instinct is not enough in this time of churn. You have to work at it, and that and that means both in how we design our stories, but also how we deliver them. And this this could be from the stage. This could be in a presentation. Could be in a one on one negotiation. But if you don't train as a storyteller, the world's going to dismiss you because the world is so transactional and, and short focused on attention that only the storytellers are the ones that can command attention. Oh, well, don't for, uh, you talk about a lot of people. Don't forget about us tankers. I was an old tanker now. They're, they're pretty good storytellers. Absolutely. They're just not true. <laughs> We we tell a lot of no, no, no whatever. Hey, what what resources are what resources are available to warriors and and their families to help them cope with the you know the feelings of isolation? I'm probably just not fitting in. What resources are available for them? 
Um, the first resource is your local, you know, the local veterans in your community. Mm-hmm. And I, I would, I really want to make a point on this and civilians. This is super important. You know, one of my buddies did a study. He did his, he did his PhD on, on veteran transition. He looked at all kinds of trauma and protocols and you know what his conclusion was, Sergeant Major, his finding. Uh, and I thought it was pretty profound is he said, you know, most veterans don't need therapy. He said, what, what most veterans really need to get back in the game and really lead us here at home is uh, a, a, a deep connection with their neighbor to have their stories heard by those neighbors without judgment and to walk that path of healing and transition with their neighbor at their shoulder. And, you know, I believe that is what's missing in veteran transition, that that's why we do the play. That's why we do the talk back, because the bulk of the resources that are available for us are right there in our own community. Um, It is the civilian who has the small business. It is the civilian who's done the nonprofit. Um, You know, we have such an array of community resources and really just extending that into the veteran population. I don't think we need these cylinders of excellence for veteran. We've got like 50 some thousand veteran transition organizations. It's overwhelming. And I'm not, I'm not against them. I'm one of them. I believe in it. But I think what's really available to us is our neighbors, our neighbors who have run the miles as civilian business owners, leaders, team members, and we really need to connect to them because they play a critical role in transition and we can't do it without them. Well, I got to tell you a quick story about my neighbors. When I moved into my new house, I built a house, moved in there. And I, and so we got the house built. We got all of our stuff in there. And I started walking around, introducing myself to the neighbors and stuff like that. And when I came back, my wife says, you know, those guys think you're nuts. <laughs> You know, I said, what, what, why? She said, well, you got to sort of move your way in slowly. And now I've been there 20 years. They're all good friends. They come over now. I mean, so it's really good. So you got to just pick the right, uh, right time to go in and talk to them, I guess. But I agree 100%. Your neighbors are really, really good. This is a great discussion. I have a, a couple more questions for you. But first, like everything else, we got to take another quick break. Sir, don't go anywhere. Say hi to your dad for me. I'll do <laughs> Now, here's a word from uh, two more of the organizations that make this uh, show possible. You're watching Your Next Mission video podcast, brought to you in part by Blue Cross Blue Shield FEP Dental, Blue Cross Blue Shield FEP Vision. Part of transitioning out is that dental and vision insurance breaks off from your medical insurance. Vision and dental is very important to be able to enjoy your retirement. Blue Cross Blue Shield makes the transition so much easier. And USAA. A promise is a trust not to be broken. Whether spoken with an oath or sealed with a pinky. And after 100 years, we're still taking care of the military community and their families. That's our mission always. Now back to your host, the 12th Sergeant Major of the Army, Jack L. Tilly. Welcome back. We're blessed to be here today with Lieutenant Colonel Retired Scott Mann, Green Beret, keynote speaker, leadership coach, founder of Rooftop Leadership and the Hero's Journey. Remember, this is, this is your show. We know there are so many issues directly affecting you. We want to do, we want to reach out to you and, and help every one of them. So please, I've said it before, reach out to me. Tell me what topics you'd like us to cover. You can call or text me at 844-424-113 or send me an email at uh, smatilly at yournextmission.org. And guess what? I'll actually reach back out to you. Sir, I understand you have a a new book coming out in the fall called Nobody is Coming to Save You. Uh, would you tell us the story beyond writing the book and, and what do you, you know, what you want your readers to get out of it? Yeah, thanks, our Major. I, you know, that, that title always kind of grabs people, I think. <laughs> and, and, and here's the thing. I think I can describe the, the book just by telling you, you know, this short story, but when I was a young captain, uh, actually no major, uh, we were we were in Afghanistan and we were we were doing a mission in a pretty remote area, and um, we had we had just settled in, and you know I made a comment something about the 
proximity of, of Taliban in the area. And my, one of the, one of the NCOs master sergeant, he said, well, settle in, sir. Ain't nobody coming. It's just us. And, uh, and we kind of stopped and he said, you know what? That's all right. We got a good team. And, and, and I can't tell you how many times in my career in these remote low trust areas, I heard NCOs say, that, Hey, nobody's coming, sir. We got to We got to we, we got to go. Nobody's coming. And it was never this, this, this victimhood or, uh, oh, no, you know, doom and gloom thing. It was always kind of an optimistic, but it was just a pragmatic declaration of no one is coming to save us. No one is coming to help us. We have to do this ourselves. And over the years, I bought into that hook, line and sinker. And it was these NCOs that taught me that you can still get, and this is the subtitle, and it's a four letter word, but you can still get big <laughs> stuff done. Yeah. And and I think we proved it with Operation Pineapple Express. I think we proved it with the play last out and a range of other initiatives that I've done on the for profit and nonprofit side over the last 30 years of my life. And 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 it's always bottom up. It's always around purpose and human connection. And recognizing that you don't have to wait for permission. You don't have to wait for institutional leaders to tell you it's okay to make an impact in your family or your community or write that play or start that business. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is this country was built on bottom up leadership. And as we go into this election, for example, it doesn't matter who gets elected. This country is going to be split right down the middle. And we need leaders who can lead through that. We need leaders who can look at that and just kind of go, OK, fine. But we're going to get this done in the PTA. We're going to get this done on this travel ball team. Our business is going to achieve this goal. And that's what this book's about. It's about what I learned as a Green Beret, both on the field and off the field, using purpose and old school interpersonal skills to build a movement and get stuff done from the bottom up. Yeah. You know, I tell people all the time, you can have the best plan in the world, but it's the people right down at the bottom that make things happen. And they know how to adjust to whatever the, you know, it's just like this. In fact, I was talking to uh, some guys the other day, they was talking about, um, uh, strategic planning. And I said, you could have the best plan in the world, but guess what? When the individual soldier, service airman, sailor, marine, or whatever, get into the fight, everything changes. You know, when those 100%. rounds start flying and, and you got to do some stuff, what you thought you was going to do and what you're going to do is two different things uh, what's, sometimes. What's yeah. the, what's the old saying, no plan survives the first contact with the enemy. <laughs> no, you know? that's for sure. Uh, That's for and, sure. and, and, and I know that there's been a lot of books written on leadership by yeah. amazing veterans. And, and what I would just say, if you're wondering, okay, what makes this one different? And yeah. you know, why would I want to get it? Um, I would say because Green Berets, modern day Green Berets, we're kind of a mixture between John Wick, Lawrence of Arabia and the Verizon guy. And, and, you know, what we focus on is understanding the human operating system better than anybody Right. And I've spent my entire adult life looking at the human operating system, how humans take action in this world, how you build trust, what rapport actually means. Why is storytelling so powerful? What, what happens with reciprocity when you listen this way? And that's what this book is just chock full of is helping people first get clear on the human operating system. And so you understand that client, that teenager better than you did when you opened that book. And then what are the levers that you can pull in terms of authentic influence, interpersonal skills that you can manage those human operating systems, including your own during that churn, when everything's falling apart, when it's hard. And that's really what I think is unique about this book. Yeah. Hey, sir, look, first of all, let me say this is, it's really been great just talking to you. I mean, I, I, I love talking to you because you just made me think about all sorts of stuff, all sorts of my stories, excuse me, all sorts of my stories that uh, bring out a lot of uh, different emotions, that's for sure. Do you have any final thoughts or anything you want to share with the audience? Maybe something we didn't cover uh, or wanted to reemphasize or something uh, from our discussion there? Yeah, I, I, I would say we're going to be going into some challenging times in the coming months. Mm -hmm. You're going to see it. You're going to see it at a community level. You're going to see it at a national level. And one of the things that I would always tell my, when I was teaching at Fort Bragg, to young Green Beret uh, candidates, I would, I would say it's often not the stories you tell. It's the stories that you ask to hear that make the difference. And so as a civilian talking to a veteran in transition, as a veteran talking to another veteran in crisis, 
um, as a veteran talking to a potential employer, right? Or to your team in a moment of challenge, thoughtful, open-ended questions that let the other party tell you their story. Questions that begin with how and what. This, the best storytellers are the best listeners. And they ask the questions that let the other party tell you their story. That is the, the heart and soul of my book, Nobody's Coming to Save You. And it's really the heart and soul of how I've navigated the world is using those calibrated questions that let the other party respond in narrative that can make the most impact and frankly, get people moving the quickest. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, you're just... You're just a great guy to talk to. Sir, let me let me say it again. I said it just a minute ago. Thank you so much for what you're doing for our veteran community. Because I know you care, just like I care. We both care. But I know you you care and you want to make a difference and you want to get out there. And uh, for those people that are listening, uh, go to the show, listen to the show, read his book, do whatever. But uh, we're all in this together. And we need to make sure that we help each other. So just thank you so much for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Hopefully I can get you back for three. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for what you do and looking out for our community. You and you and Ted both love you guys dearly and, and let me know if you need anything. All right. God bless. Thanks to Lieutenant Colonel Retired Scott Mann for, for being with us today. I'm Jack Tilly, 12th Sergeant Major of the Army, and you've been enjoying your next mission video podcast. And thank you for joining us today. Log on to our website, yournextmission.org, and leave me a review. I always say, I hope it's a good review, but if it's a bad one, I guess I could take it. While you're there, you can visit our nonprofit and corporate partners who have jobs and services available that can assist you in your transition from the military. And check out our job board in partnership with Recruit Military, where you can search for a job that's really just right for you. You'll find a short video that will help you find tune your search and where you can also create your own personal profile. You can follow me on all my personal social media pages. I never thought I'd say this. Facebook, X, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Rumble. And if you like what we're doing with Your Next Mission, please, please click on the subscribe button below. And don't forget to click on the bell to receive notifications about all of our upcoming video podcasts. Don't forget, we want to hear from you. Please leave me a message or send me a text at 844-424-1134 or send me an email at smatilly at yournextmission.org. Thanks again to Lieutenant Colonel Retired uh, Scott Mann for, from the Hero's Journey for, for George. And I'm going to just say that uh, what a great warrior, uh, certainly what a person that cares so much uh, about uh, you know what we're all doing. You know, when you talk about stories, and, and uh, he, he said it about, uh, don't be afraid to tell your story. I, I got to be honest with you, I struggle sometimes about telling stories because it makes me, it makes me cry, it makes me tear up, and it hurts. But it's okay. It's okay about, about hurting. It's okay about, about remembering. Because you can help each other out. I tell everybody it's about life. It's about God. It's about making a difference in all of our lives. So tell your story. Make sure other people know how you feel. Thanks for watching, and thanks to New Mind Students. And of course, our sponsors, Navy Federal Credit Union, Purdue Global, Blue Cross Blue Shield, FEP Dental, and Blue Cross Blue Shield, FEP Vision, and USAA. We appreciate all you do for our military. And as always, see you on the high ground. Hua! You've been listening to Your Next Mission, brought to you by the American Freedom Foundation. Learn more by visiting yournextmission.org.